from UTB and I help schools all over New Zealand uh, get their regionally allocated PLD applications through the line and a bunch of other stuff and this is Mark. Hi everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, learning and development lead is my new role. I'm a trainer with UTB, have been th since 2017. We might um, uh, see some of those changes that I've seen in PLD over the years. But yeah, really keen to be clicking on the buttons for you today. And if there's anything I can do to help out as we go along, I might chime in. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Okay, so we're going to start with the next slide. So what is regionally allocated PLD? So this funding is um, allows you to work with facilitators to meet your needs and um, talk and we ways in which we help schools. Um, we impact student achievement and engagement and integrate things like digital fluency or localized curriculum or assessment for learning across um, all of the curriculum areas. And we personalize and tailor for our specific PLD schools or your cohort or your kahuyo, kahue apo or your cluster. Cool. Are and that, that gives you a little bit more information. We are going to actually give you these slides at the end of this uh, mm. session. So you can jump back, press pause, click on the links that we've got on there. So I'm not going to read all the information for you. We're just going to go through it quite quickly through questions number one to nine of the application today and just more about what the PLD funding is. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to go back through and pause it or click on the links that are within the slideshow um, once we pass it on to you. Awesome. MOE PLD is Funded by the ministry, they've got a big bucket of money that is can be handed out to schools across the region. Um, there's particular numbers of hours available across all the regions of New Zealand. And in each of those regions, a panel sets out and has a look at the applications. But it's really important to know that those panels are other principles. So when you're putting your application together, you're speaking with colleagues. So you don't need to utilize a whole bunch of jargon. And in fact, that's just one of the things they advised against. Mm. So in terms of how many hours you can apply for, you'll notice uh, actually in the next co next page, um, we're talking about um, uh, there's some guidance around the ministry provides uh, how much the ministry can, can provide in one year. Um, but it's very different for every school and we can talk you through that on a call um, later on but so if you've chosen to put an application for 18 months then you could be applying for up to um 180 and 190 hours across two years it could be double the amount so keep in mind that when you're applying for a pld um that the estimate of hours is related to the staff based on one year the other thing about that this thing is the preparation time is included in all those hours so just to know that the delivery and reporting the travel time is not included so you don't need to worry about if they're working with a facilitator who's traveling to get you um, our advice is to apply for as many hours as you can you may get less uh, but you're not going to get more so really push and be optimistic about how many hours that you think you could achieve um, we provide PLD in digital fluency localized curriculum and assessment for learning and there's also uh, cultural capabilities uh, available out there that we partner with um, in case you'd like to work alongside then we can put you in the right direction for that too uh, and all our facilitators have been accredited by the Ministry of Education uh, to provide really high quality PLD that's going to meet your needs really well and they're all teachers or DT leads all right so how do you get this um, for your school? So um, the first part is drafting up your application and we've got lots of tips and some documents that really help you do that. Once you've drafted it and send it through, send it through to us for your feedback. And you know, we've worked on hundreds of applications. So we're really happy to share our expertise with you. Once you receive that feedback, you submit your application through the ESL portal and you can copy and paste your answers from that draft doc that we've created uh, to provide a really seamless transition because going into that ESL portal blind and just typing straight into it can be a real, <laughs> um, really hard sometimes. So the closing date for the term applications is generally the second or third week of term. 
Um, so for Turn 4 2022, uh, we've got the 3rd of November, and that is the last month of 2022. It's, it says 29th of October, but those sort of dates do change every now and again, don't they? That's right, yeah, mm. every term. So it's about week two or week three of every term, and then you mm. hear back from the panel about week five or six. All right, so let's take a look at the application. Um, so question one, oh, so just some key points to remember to make it clear. Uh, share your draft with other people to make sure that you're on the right page. Um, and this is another tip. If you don't have that big picture plan yet, just um, a possibility is to apply for less hours and then spend time with us creating a really clear, succinct plan that mm. really will drive some traction in your school. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that can trip people over is they go for the, the large amount that might last a couple of years. Um, you know, and, and I think the boards recognize the fact that not every school has a plan. That's the reason why they want digital fluency, you know, support. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good tip. If you sort of go for sort of 30 or 40 hours off the bat just to develop that plan, then that can, that can be a, a go a long way to getting the next contract. And it's worth mentioning too, that most schools that we work with actually run for at least three or four contracts over a period of time, don't they? You know, we, um, we, we, we do see a lot of momentum and change in that too. So it's not just a one-off sometimes, or usually. Mm. And another little trick that we heard is that um, the lower number that you go for, um, sometimes they don't go through with this absolute fine tooth comb, but um, yeah, that could be another tip. All right, so let's have a look at the application. So question one's asking you for a proposal name, and this is the name that will be shown on the portal as well. So it might be useful to use a date or a particular priority. So for example, integrating localized curriculum and then your school name, super simple and just don't overthink it. Okay, so question two asked uh, whether the proposal is for your school or your kura or it's for a kahui ako or a cluster. So just select the appropriate answer and whether you're working on English medium or Maori medium. Question three uh, is all about what priority underpins your proposal. So um, we suggest not ticking lots, really focus on one, possibly two, um, just because it's just um, it's a bit much to have to really dig deep into a goal that goes across more than one priority. So. Mm. Um, assessment for learning and one other really important key note is that if you do tick cultural capability you do need to um, get a provider that that will um, facilitate at least 25 percent of your hours so sometimes i mean when i was creating them uh, as in my role as a dp i thought that that might make it look better but it's actually harder and it's worth noting too that that's not something that we've um, got the capability internally to be able to help with, but if we did have a contract with you around digital fluency or capability, then we help schools, don't we, Bex, um, partner up with other companies. And we've got some good good uh, relationships with different um, companies around the uh, country that can help us with that. So that's, that's one thing to bear in mind. That's right. So question five is asking you uh, that point we made earlier about not doing this on your own. So which co which groups have contributed? So mm. where, whoever you've received feedback and ideas from and the more groups you contribute, the better. You could do this with a digital survey, which we've got lots of that we can help you with. Uh, when we've worked with younger students, we've done hands up surveys or feedbacks from meetings and formal conversations. But if you identify the groups that fit into the proposal, they will ask how they have. So this is one of your last multi-choice questions. Uh, you don't have to have a huge amount of detail on here, but you might include whether there was a survey that was sent out and how many responses you had, uh, whether the board a meeting, uh, maybe something about board meeting, and maybe you could attach the documents to your application. That is a tip there. Tip, do not miss this tip. You can attach documents. What, what question did that relate to, Bex? Was that number four? Uh, we're up to four, yeah. Number yep. four and five. Cool. We're hitting between four and five at the moment. Yep. Um, a really good idea is that, to so you stay in the word limit, is to attach extra information you choose. So uh, you might talk about focused staff meeting that we've, uh, where we identified the vision for the year uh, and it clearly showed us that the staff are wanting greater support in an area. Um, or as you'll see in our strategic plan that it that it's attached in one of our four key roles for the year. So when it comes, to, so when it comes to that, just attach those docs so it doesn't um, impact on your word limit. 
I don't um, think we've so just to interrupt you. I don't think we see a question five on there. Oh, um, right. okay. That might be why I was looking at it. But yeah, question five relates to the groups that were involved in the application, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So if we go to question seven and six, seven and eight, mm -hmm. uh, seven and eight. Yep. Yeah. So uh, seven and eight, um, we want to um, look at what are we looking at? How many terms? Right. So um, remember, you can adjust this. Uh, so the length of time you want from PLD over. So remember that you can adjust this if you get fewer hours that you apply for and keep in mind the numbers you're applying for uh, are over the 12 months. So you can increase what if you're working over a longer time. So we've got many of our schools working across 18 month term contracts and they can really um, solidify the change during that time. Do you agree, Mark? You've been in lots of schools for mm. about that time. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to me how flexible the ministry are, you know, if you can justify it. I, and I think some of that flexibility comes from the challenges that we've had with remote you know, learning and, and the challenges with COVID. But yeah, the ministry, you can talk to your regional uh, ministry contact and then they can help you with that. So end of end of date contract times uh that kind of thing that yeah, that's it's uh, you know just a conversation away that's right and if you do mm. finish up the hours in a shorter time frame you can apply for more mm. so question a is the uh, total number of staff that will be involved in your school and you didn't be including all your teachers leadership teams um and lots of our schools also include their teacher aides and admin staff as well because uh when you want cohesion and a shared understanding it really needs to involve all the staff and then question nine is about the number of hours that you're applying for, keeping in mind you want to apply for as many as you can. All right, so um, the, those first questions are not a huge ask because they're a multi-choice. Um, the question where you identify who's contributed uh, to your proposal might take a little bit more thinking, but the rest of it would probably be able to be completed in less than five minutes. So um, let's talk about the evidence side of things now. So we have seen um, like attachments that have photographs of brainstorming on a whiteboard on a large paper. Uh, we've seen videos and we've also seen a whole range of uh, progress reports uh, where we're going so far and where we want to go. This is the kind of stuff you can use as evidence. So the main thing is to think about how you're going to measure the outcomes for your PLD uh, so you know you're successful. So what are you looking for there to be a shift and how you're going to record and report on that? And we can, we can, um, it's actually just come to me too. Like, I, we do help people with those leadership sessions. So, if a school was thinking that they'd like some support with developing that thinking or that evidence, or, you know, do, are going through a process to develop their strategic plan, then that's something that we'd be happy to jump on a call and help them facilitate that, right? Absolutely. Mm. We love doing that stuff. Mm. All right, so next slide um, measuring outcomes. So, you can have a look through that. That just gives you some more information. And we are gonna just have a quick chat about um, our point of difference at UTB. So uh, we begin each contract with a meeting with the leadership team, which Mark is our incredible leadership guru. I learn, learn stuff from him every day. Uh, and so they can, uh, so you co-construct the program that'll best fit your school, don't you, Mark? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, I think that's one of the things that sets us apart a little bit from some of the companies that you know you can work with, not just in the digital fluency space, but with all priorities. Uh, some some companies have some content or a framework or you know like something that they want to develop in your school that is something that they've they you know that um, I don't want to give any examples, but they definitely that's sort of their cope up. Really, they go in and they deliver their content and their framework. Whereas we have those up our sleeve that we can pull out when we need it but we we definitely do take much more of a consultative approach and we're walking alongside you and we do it with you not for you it's sort of our catchphrase mm. yeah and i can uh i know that feeling because i was walked through this with mark he was my facilitator mm. when i was at a school and uh we made some incredible traction at our school mm. so the other thing is that we can do some online support as well as in person and it can be adjusted throughout to make sure that we're still meeting your needs uh, we can help you collect regular feedback from all your teachers to make sure that what's going on is helpful and that we're meeting the needs that have, we've, that have been identified in the journey plan. Mm. And we also want to make sure you feel confident in what we're doing is going to reach those goals that you set in the beginning. So one thing we've learned is that the leadership session at the beginning is uh, to, to clear, clear a real clear plan of your professional development priorities. And that plan is going to look 
uh, really supports to be um, it, the PRD contract to be successful, um, mm. getting the right targeted training for staff rather than a one size fits all approach. Uh, we also um, have an incredible certified leadership program that Mark and I run and um, teachers and educators right across New Zealand. Some of your team might want to take part in and that really enables sustainability in your school and uh, drives traction even when we're not there with those yeah. people, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and we've also got an incredible technical team that can support you to really adjust some of your admin settings uh, that you've got on your uh, Google Drives or your Microsoft. We uh, support in all those areas and to provide the most safe and secure options for your student and your staff. So that really being really digitally secure. Um, and that's just a starting point. We can deliver more than that. We've got a wonderful measurement tools and we've got great online resources as well. Uh, and we can flip through some of the next slides which show some of the partners that we're with as well. So we do face-to-face -face training, virtual learn on demand, certified leader. Next slide, Mark. Uh, that just explains it a bit more. We're affiliated with Apple. Uh, we've got Google, we're a uh, Google partner and a Microsoft partner. We can also help with heaps of STEAM cool stuff uh, to enhance curriculum. And we've also got our learn on demand platform and our uh, resource hub. So there's some more tips and tricks on that slideshow there that you can click through when you get the slideshow. And that uh, if you would like this presentation, uh, my email address is bex at usingtechnologybetter.com and I will flick it through to you. We can jump on a call and chat about this further. But just the main thing is, is that we are here to help you through this process. It doesn't have to be onerous. It doesn't have to be huge and the, your budget loves it because it is all free. And I think the the other thing that we that we talk to schools about a lot is the fact that we do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You know, so a lot of schools we talk to, you know, they might say we don't have the time or the capacity or we just can't focus on that right now. Uh, we, we're very adaptable with the way that we approach it. So we can fit in with what you're already doing. If you've been on a PLD journey with something else that's a different type of focus, whether it's local curriculum or you know you've been focusing on maths or literacy that's sort of uh, happening a lot at the moment we can actually target this digital fluency to en enhance that too so we can we can do as much or as little as you've got capacity for um, the, the key thing is to develop that relationship and get something started yeah cool all right we'll see you on our second video uh, next week uh, unpacking the next couple of questions Matewa.